What's up everybody? I'm Luke and this is a Subaru Only Show. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about TGVs. Yes, TGVs. What are they? How do they work? Should you modify them? If you modify them, will it provide any horsepower or performance gains? And if you are going to go about doing it, how the hell do you do it? I'm going to walk you guys through modifying these TGVs and talk about the benefits of doing that. Okay, let's start by taking a closer look at how these TGVs work on my workshop bench behind me. Okay, tumble generator valves. How do these suckers work? First off, I'll talk about where they're located. There's actually two of these in your engine. There's one on either side, underneath the intake manifold, right before that air column enters the heads. And the reason these tumble generator valves are put in your engine are basically for emissions. What they do is they have a little valve here, a butterfly valve, and you can see it right here. It's this little copper colored plate right here, and it's closed in this position as it is now when the engine's cold. Now the reason Subaru installed those butterfly valves is to create turbulence in the air column so that the engine burns the fuel more efficiently and you have lower emissions. That's essentially the only reason these butterfly valves are in these TGVs. It's also the reason you'll see TGV deletes on Japanese domestic vehicles because the emissions standards in that country don't require them to be on their engines and Subaru chooses not to put them in. So by that rationale, it certainly doesn't seem like these are necessary from a long-term performance or reliability standpoint. So that's what the TGVs are. They're tumble generator valves, and they're meant to generate turbulence in that air column so you get better emissions. Now, once the engine is up to operating temperature, that butterfly valve will actually rotate from that partially closed position to straight up and fully open position. But the problem with that is even when these butterfly valves are in a straight up position, there's actually still a lot of obstruction to the air column passing through. And the reality is if you remove these butterfly valves, these Subaru engines will breathe better, they'll pass more air into their cylinder heads, and as a result, they're gonna make more horsepower. Now there's another thing to consider. If your vehicle has TGVs and you have these sensors on, if you actually unplug the sensor or remove these and don't have the sensor hooked up, you're going to get a fault code sent to your ECU. For that reason, a lot of people like to just remove the butterflies and leave the rod in, leave the sensor in, and let that sensor rotate that rod, but have it rotate that rod with no butterflies on it. That way the sensor thinks that you still have your TGVs fully assembled, it doesn't throw a fault code to your ECU, and you can run through all your missions and your two-year smog intervals with no problems whatsoever. So for me, since I'm in California, I'm gonna go ahead and take that route. I'm gonna remove these butterflies, but leave the rods in, leave the sensor in, and leave all the sensor hardware connected to the ECU. That way, there's no fault code sent to the ECU, and I'll have no problems passing the smog every two years. Okay, let's take a closer look so I can show you guys how I remove these butterfly valves. Okay, here's a close-up view of one of these TGVs. And as you can see, the valves are pretty much in the closed position. There's a little bit of air opening right there, and that's basically the way they are when the engine's cold. When the engine's warmed fully, like I said, these butterfly valves will lift straight up and the air will pass through with less obstruction or the minimal amount of obstruction. Now, if you're gonna remove these butterfly valves, the first thing you'd think is, hey, this is just a Phillips screw. Let's go ahead and remove this Phillips screw and this Phillips screw, and this butterfly valve should slip right out. The problem with that is that even after soaking this thing with penetrating fluid, every time I've tried to remove one of these screws, they end up stripping because they're softer metal and they're really, really tight in there. And as a result, these suckers strip every single time. And the easiest thing that I've found to do, go ahead and drill out these little screws. That way these blades can slide out easily with nothing holding them in. Here's my other TGV. I've already done that to this TGV those screw holes stripped as soon as I tried to use a Phillips screwdriver on them. So I actually ended up having to drill them out with a drill bit, and then I could pull those blades out. Okay, coming back to this TGV that I'm gonna show you guys how to modify. The first thing I'm gonna do is get a small drill bit to do a pilot hole through this little screw. Then I'll step it up to a larger diameter drill bit, and finally, to a final diameter drill bit. You can do it in two steps, but I like to do it in three steps. All right, start with your smallest bit. Basically, just get perpendicular to your rod and start drilling that sucker. Light pressure. Okay, that's the first set of holes with a small bit. I'm going to gradually go up to the next size bit and then the largest bit necessary to completely drill out that screw hole. So these are basically the three drill bit sizes I'm using. Another thing I'll mention is try not to scratch 
or mar any of the inner bore surface here. You want to keep this inner surface totally smooth. You want to try not to damage any of this rod so that you keep it totally smooth. This rod is going to have to rotate still. There's a little motor in here that rotates that rod when the engine gets warm. And you want that rod to be able to rotate so that the sensor doesn't trip any fault codes for your ECU. Or I've drilled the next size hole. That's what it should look like. Still no damage to that rod. Next we'll drill the last size so that those screws are completely bored out and I can remove those blades. All right, the third and final hole is drilled and I should be able to remove these plates. Clean off those shavings and let's go get some needle nose pliers and let's see if we can pull those brass looking plates out. Okay, I got a set of needle nose pliers. Basically, you can stick your fingers underneath through the bottom. That way you can push those blades up a little bit. So push that blade up from the bottom of your fingers like that. Grab with a needle nose plier. And let's see if I can pull this sucker out. Boom! Out. I feel like I just pulled a piece of shrapnel out of a, of a dying, injured man. All right, let's see if I can pull this one out. Oh yeah, you slide right out. Boom, out, sweet. Okay, so basically we got these bores completely open. Now all I need to do is clean these suckers and this TGV is ready to be bolted back onto my intake manifold and installed back in my 2004 Subaru Forester XT. All right, and that's it. We got the butterfly out of the TGV. This is a pseudo semi TGV delete now. Still has a rod in there, but I'm willing to bet that having this butterfly valve removed does add some horsepower. And as a matter of fact, if you'll check out our buddies over at MRP Performance down under, Brett Middleton, a little shout out to you, my brother. Love your shit. You're a legend. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep racing those Subarus. According to Brett Middleton, he's done dyno test results that removing these butterfly valves from these TGVs and leaving this rod in certainly adds horsepower to the rear wheels. And that would certainly be even more valuable a performance gain if you're under boosted conditions running 1.5 or more bar. Now there's one other thing I want to talk about. That's these screw holes that you drilled out. In Brett Middleton's video from MRP Performance, he actually puts those screws back in that rod. And I'm not gonna do that. And I thought about it long and hard. I'm gonna go with my gut instinct on this one because I think I've thought it through and I understand the fundamental physics. I understand the airflow of what's happening here. I'm gonna tell you, if you look at the way this rod is positioned, and if you look at the way these screw holes are positioned, these screw holes are facing up, which is the path of airflow when the throttle blade would actually be closed, so when the engine's cold, right? So right now in the position that this rod is in and these screw holes are in, this engine would be cold. Now when the engine warms up, that rod actually rotates so that those butterfly valves would have been straight up. When that valve rotates, those screw holes are no longer in the path of airflow. They're actually perpendicular to the path of airflow and they essentially won't have any airflow hitting them and creating any turbulence. So what I'm thinking is that these screw holes will create more turbulence when the engine's cold but once the engine's up to operating temperature and that rod is rotated 90 degrees, those screw holes will no longer be in the path of air and those screw holes can't actually cause any disturbance or turbulence to the airflow and therefore they won't actually affect anything even if I had screws in those holes. The other part of that is actually that the head of the screw creates a minor obstruction and that once this rod rotates, having the head of the screw in that path of the airflow actually creates a obstruction on a small scale, and I'm talking on micro scales here, and it might even be negligible, it most likely is negligible on your horsepower gains at your wheels. But the way I like to do things, I like to stick to fundamental sound theory. And for the life of me, it just doesn't make any sense to put a screw in these holes because of all the things I've said. So I'm thinking, I'm leaving those screw holes open. And if anybody's got anything to say about it, I'd love to hear your comments. As a matter of fact, Brett from MRP Performance I'd love to hear your opinion on this. I think I have some sound logic here and it'd be really, really cool if you'd weigh in. So that's gonna be it for today. I'm Luke, this is a super only show. Thanks a lot for checking out the video. If you guys got any comments, please leave a comment. If you'd like to see future videos, make sure you subscribe. Thanks a lot guys, really appreciate it. This has been fun, until next time, later.